okay let us start our topic that is laws of limiting factors and in this presentation i will mainly cover leibniz law of minimum before starting our presentation it is very important for us to know two terms one is factor and another is limiting factor any part or condition of the environment that influences the life of one or more organisms can be termed as ecological factor environmental factor eco factor or simply factor they constitute some external force or simply one may say condition which affects the occurrence distribution behavior and survival of a particular species limiting factors are any factors or variables in an environment capable of limiting a process such as growth abundance and distribution of organism in an ecosystem in natural world limiting factors like availability of food water shelter and space can change animal and plant population if one of the limiting factor changes then animal and plant population changes too next comes distinguishing features of limiting factors limiting factors the name indicates are the factors that are not present in abundance this limit the growth or distribution of an ecosystem that is a limiting factor is anything that constrains a population size and stop it from growing this can be either physical or biological factors which are identified by the increase or decrease in growth or distribution of a population some example of limiting factors are biotic like food meats and competition with other organisms for resources others are abiotic like space temperature altitude and amount of sunlight available in an environment limiting factors can be single or a group of related factors there can be many different limiting factor at work in single habitat and the same limiting factor can affect the population of both plant and animal species anything that restricts the number of individuals in a population is termed as limiting factor finally they can affect more than one population in a community ultimately limiting factor determines a habitat scaling capacity which is the maximum size of the population it can support types of environmental factors two contrasting types of environmental factors are generally recognized the first one is biotic and abiotic factors biotic variables or factors include all living organisms in an ecosystem and abiotic factors are non living components of an ecosystem biotic factors are the aggregate of influence exerted on organism by the life processes of other organisms that is biotic factors include some interactions between organisms unlike abiotic factors the action of biotic factors is manifested by the interaction of different species of organisms with others here we can take the example of predator prey relationship the activity of predators affect the dynamics of the abundance of their prey and this affects in turn the size of the predatory population how it is very important if the population of predator increases the prey population decreases and if the prey population increases then reverse occurs and when 
the population of predator increases, some other factors act on them, those are disease, competition, etc. Abiotic factors are extremely broad, sunlight, air, soil, rock, mineral, water, temperature are all abiotic factors. Sunlight provides energy that plant utilize to grow, which ultimately holds up the whole biotic community. So here, the first photograph is of predation and the second one is of competition. These are examples of biotic factors and these are different abiotic factors like wind, sunlight, soil, temperature, atmosphere, water. The next one is density dependent and density independent factors. The picture itself indicates predation which is a density dependent factor and drought which is a density independent factor. Density dependent factors are often biotic variables. Details about density dependent and density independent factors I have discussed in next slides. Now we can summarize biological factors or biotic factors involve interactions between organisms in the form of predation, competition, parasitism and herbivory. Again physical factors or abiotic factors include temperature, water availability, oxygen, salinity, light, food and nutrients etc. Density dependent factors and density independent factors. Density dependent factors are those factors whose effect on the population is determined by the total size of the population. Predation and disease as well as resource availability are all examples of density dependent factors. Density dependent factors operates only when the population density reaches certain level. This factor operates strongly when the population is large and dense. Example competition, predation, disease, etc. That means density dependent factors always act on the large population. Density independent factors are those which limits the size of the population but whose effect is not dependent on size of the population that is the number of individuals. Examples of density independent factors include environmentally stressful events such as earthquakes, tsunamis and volcanic eruptions as well as drought or flood and destructive occurrences such as input of extreme environmental pollutants. Density independent factors affect all population regardless of the population size. Density independent factors affect population no matter what is its density. Example, in Kazirunga National Park every year flood occurs. So here you can consider flood as density independent factor because flood comes every year ignoring the population of any species. Now comes the main part that is Leibniz's law of minimum. To occur and thrive in a given situation, an organism must have essential materials which are necessary for growth and reproduction. We all know for proper existence in an environment, an animal must have all essential components in proper amount. And deficiency of any particular one will hamper its growth. According to this concept, growth is regulated by the limiting factor this is, that is resources in scarcity but not in abundance. For a population to be healthy, factors such as food, nutrients, water and space must be available. 
when there are not resources to support the population then what happens limiting factors are resources or other factors in the environment that can lower the population growth rate this include a low food supply and a lack of space limiting factor can lower birth rate increase death rate or lead to emigration or extinction under steady conditions the essential material available in amounts most closely approaching the critical minimum needed will tend to be the limiting one in steady conditions the components which animal will utilize mostly will tend to be the limiting one until the animal will try to utilize another component the low minimum is not applicable under transient state condition when the amount and hence the effect of many constituents rapidly changes that is called transient state the scientific application of libix law of minimum are extended to ecosystem model or populations the idea that the organism is no long no stronger than the weakest link in its ecological chain of requirement was first as expressed by libig in 1840 he found that the yield of crop was often limited not by the nutrients needed in large quantities but by some raw materials which always needed in minute quantities his statement that growth of plant is dependent on the amount of food stuff which is presented to it in minimum quantity has come to be known as libig's law there are some reviews associated with libig's law the first one taylor explained that the function of an organism is controlled or limited by essential environmental factor or combination of factors presented to it in the least favorable amount that means the factors become effective during some critical periods but may not act in continuous manner odom in 1971 on the other hand restrict the concept of minimum to chemical materials like oxygen phosphorus etc he gave his emphasis in inclusion of limiting effect of maximum to the law of tolerance there are there are some subsidiary principles which are associated with libig's law two types of principles are there the first one is libig's law is strictly applicable under steady state conditions that is when the average inflow of energy and materials balance the outflow over a annual cycle the best example is given by the concentration of carbon dioxide in lake ecosystem suppose carbon dioxide is the limiting factor in lake and the productivity is in equilibrium with the rate of supply of carbon dioxide which comes from the decay of organic matter in this steady condition other factors like light nitrogen etc were available in excess use if somehow carbon dioxide concentration increases in the lake the productivity would also change and thus there will be no steady state and there will be no minimum constituent present 
Thus, the rate of production would rapidly changes as various constituents were used up and the other factors will become limiting. Say again carbon dioxide and thus the condition of limiting factor operates again. Now second principle, the second important consideration is factor interaction. High concentration or availability of some substance or the action of some factor may modify the rate of utilization of a factor which is limiting. Sometimes organisms can substitute at least in part a chemically closely related substance for one that is deficient in the environment. Some plants have been shown to require less zinc when growing in shade than growing in full sunlight. Therefore, a low concentration of zinc in soil would less likely be limiting to plants in the shade than the plants under the same condition in full sunlight. Again, where strontium is abundant, molluscs are able to substitute calcium to a particular extent in their cells in that particular environment. Liebig's law of minimum is also known as barrel concept or barrel theory. Liebig used the image of barrel with unequal steps to explain how plant growth is limited by elements in sorted supply. So, this is the image of the barrel and these are the length of different steps. So, this is, this is the sorted steps where water is leaking. The capacity of barrel is limited by the sorted step suppose one nutrient and can only be increased by lengthening that step. When the step is lengthened another becomes limiting in nature. Utility of limiting factor concept. This gives the ecologist an entering wedge into study of complex situations that is by using limiting factor it is very easy for ecologist to study the different complex interactions which were going on within the ecosystem. Ecologist can discover the probable weak links and thus focuses attention to those environmental conditions most likely to be critical or limiting. There is some weakness in Liebig's law. He was only interested in nutrients, interested only in the effects from the nutrient deficiency. He did not take into account the concept of synergism. Synergism which is the result of an interaction of two or more factors so that the combined effect is greater than the sum of their separate effects. Finally, we can understand that an ecosystem relies on a set of complex situations help it to succeed like availability of food, water, so, any issue at its lowest minimum or highest limit represent a limiting factor to the community. Regarding preparation of this presentation, I have consulted these books. One is Manidip Raj Ecology and second one P.D. Sharma's Ecology and Environment. Thank you very much.